to change your filter, you go to this side of the engine. And if you'll note, right down here is your engine oil filter. It's screwed on there hand tight. You should be able to reach around there once you've drained your oil, unscrew the filter, get your new filter, lubricate the seal on the top of the filter by taking your, your finger and dipping it in the oil and just lubricate that and screw it back on hand tight. Okay, when you're ready to start your engine, the first thing you will do after checking your oil and determining everything's all right is you'll grasp your choke. Your choke extends out from this side under your air breather, it has a loop on the end of it. You just pull outward on it. That sets your choke. Then you crank your engine, turning this key right here. If your engine does not start fairly soon after doing that, stop cranking. One of the greatest dangers to this system is to over crank that starter. If you crank it too long, it'll burn the starter up and allow it to rest in between times. If you're gonna crank it, it's giving you trouble starting. Don't crank it for more than about 20 or 30 seconds and let it set for at least a minute in between times of cranking. If the engine still does not start, you can remove your air breather. Remove the filter cover. Leave your choke open and using a can of WD-40 for starter fluid, just spray a burst down into the throat of the carburetor while you're cranking the engine. A quick burst should be enough. Do not continue to spray after the engine catches as it can backfire and, and cause a fire or injury damage hazard, okay? Once your engine is running, it should continue to run. You replace your filter. Replace the breather cover. And you're ready to continue with the operation of your machine. The frequency at which you change this air filter or check this air filter can vary depending upon the, the uh, area in which you're washing. If you're washing in a city where there are no uh, airborne contaminants, then you're probably all right. But if you're on a construction site and or a strip coal mine or something like that, what you need to do is check it more frequently. The frequency at which you need to check it's going to vary. Uh, you're just going to have to play that by ear. Your spark plugs are located on either side of your engine here and here. To change your spark plugs, you never do it when the engine's hot. You probably don't need to do it more than once to twice a year. If you'll check your manual, you'll find the gap for that spark plug is 30 thousandths. Remove the spark plug, gap your new spark plug, and then insert it. Do not over tighten. That's about all I recommend you do on these engines, other than you might want to, after a while, go around and check the screws. Don't, not the head bolts, but the sheet metal screws here, down here, here, and here. 
check them for tightness. If you know or you can see oil leaking from your valve covers, gently snug these screws. Again, don't get on them and crank down. Don't try to turn them two or three rounds. If you do, you'll cause damage. All right, this is your engine fuel filter. Your engine fuel filter probably needs to be changed at least once a year. Probably no more than that. I'd say every couple of years you need to look at these fuel lines, see what condition they're in. If they're starting to crack, change them. The engine comes from the factory with these spring tight hose clamps. I don't recommend reusing them. Once you uh, have to remove them, go back with a screw type hose clamp similar to what we use on the soap line. That's a number four hose clamp. Okay. Beyond that, I don't recommend you go into any internal repairs in the engine unless you're a factory trained, factory authorized dealer. If you'll follow this information we've just given you, you should experience a very long and productive life with your engine.